Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is our four-year anniversary show in support of the CRA Cigar Rights of America. Please go sign up today, cigarrights.org. Use the ambassador code 0159. If you do that, Will will see that you joined or renewed your subscription, and he will send you a free cigar. I think he's going to get them from my humidor that's in my office, so you definitely want to do that because there's some great smokes in there. Yeah, that'll be very easy. Yep, that's right. So I'm here with Will Cooper, and joining us in studio is the ever so popular and loving Mr. Stogie Santa. Welcome, Stogie good, Santa. Uh, good to afternoon. Show. Can't say good evening, but that's right. It is the it is the afternoon that mm-hmm. does not stop us from drinking. No, apparently, no, no. you've got a, a pint glass with, with some bourbon in it. Yeah, <laughs> things <laughs> things are going to get interesting. Uh, I apparently I was the only one that got the memo about the Halloween costume. In any case, on the lines via Skype, uh, we've got two very special guests, Mr. Phil Zangi and Jean-Michel. Louis is here with us. Welcome, guys, to the show. Thank you very much for letting us be on the show again. And uh, congratulations on your anniversary. And um, all I can say is you guys, in the last two years I've been working with you, have really upped your game, and I'm proud to be part of this whole outfit. Yes, thank you very much, Phil. Um, we're always happy to smoke your cigars um, and Jean-Michel's cigars as well. Absolutely. Um, in particular, this new Indian motorcycle cigar. I am a huge fan also of the Saga Blend Number no. 7, especially in the Perfecto size. One of, one of best Perfectos for the money. Out uh, there. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, Phil, I'll start with you since we lit up this uh, Indian motorcycle cigar, and I've been really enjoying the Robusto in the natural wrapper. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the blend? Okay, the blend, basically, the I used, I went a little bit out of my wheelhouse on the wrapper, you know, because I used a Ecuadorian Havano instead of using, the, normally I used a Nicaraguan Havano, Havana 2000. So that's the wrapper on there. I use a San Vicente binder like I use on Debonair. Mm-hmm. I use a Havana Vuelta Abajo, Ligero from Nicaragua, and then I use Piloto Cubano Original. It's the original seed strain from Cuba in the Seiko. So it's a 50-50 blend. Um, it's a more medium body, but still got the full flavor to it. And I think it's, uh, I kind of blended it that way because I didn't want it to be a one trick pony thing that people are expecting debonair or they're not. Or, so it's its own thing. I really believe that it's its own entity. And I think that people will, can it, like both cigars, you know? It's interesting, Phil, you changed the wrapper on the Indian motorcycle, but you kept the binder the same from the debonair. Were you surprised that you were able to keep the binder and still maintain some differences between the blend and that wrapper actually worked with that binder? I, I, that binder, I think, is a good constant. Um, I, I just trust it. I mean, we did the blending and we tasted it, and it came out correct, and it came out with the profile we were looking for. But I, I do believe in that binder, and I like the San Vicente. It just gives it a, especially the stuff from Leo, it's got a clean, crisp taste to it, and it heightens the blend inside. You know, it does. Yeah, and it and it also burns really well too. These cigars burn awesome. Yep. Great okay. combustion rate on them, as as always. It, burn well. Yeah, you know, if I'm going to smoke a cigar and it's going to have bad construction, you know how I'm prone to that I am. And I've smoked a ton of these Indian motorcycles and, and not one problem. So props to you, my friend. Your, your quality control is awesome. Dogi Santa predicted it like he did with the Maduro and the Debonair and with the Havano and the Indian. He said those are the runners, and he's not been wrong yet. Mm. I'm going to start gambling with him online, and he could be my life. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's an easy gamble when you make good <laughs> sticks. It's not, a, it's, it's, it's not hard. Yeah. So how? Uh, so you did a whirlwind tour, Phil. How has the Indian motorcycle been? How have people been taking on to the Indian motorcycle brand? I I can say it's um, it's humbling and flattering, and it's almost surreal because to have the Indian motorcycle trademark back in my hands in the tobacco division part, um, and to think that it would do well, that people would receive it well, is an understatement. It's been received incredibly well. It's growing daily, um, and the biggest 
compliment I get is that people say it's not a gimmick. Mm. It's not just a famous brand on a cigar. It's a great cigar with a famous brand attached to it, you know? So um, I'm just, I'm so happy. I, I don't even know how to really explain it. You know, I'm just... Uh, and Phil, I think you've done a, a great job with the branding of the cigar. And uh, uh, likely, if I'm going to ask you this question, you're going to say there's been no confusion between the Indian Motorcycles Ultra Premium that you come out with and the older uh, Indian tobacco brand um, that you started out with, right? Yeah, I... The thing is, it's not really, a, yeah, there's been no confusion because I've kind of set it up to say that basically this is the the re, resurgence of the original ideal I had to do Indian tobacco, but it's with the, the main flagship company, Indian Motorcycle, which is 162 dealerships now, and they're backing me up 100%. I cannot thank them enough, the people in Indian Motorcycle Company, how much they've helped me and actually been integral in my success by providing their riders group, their dealerships to give us the the actual flash, which is the motorcycles, which is the legitimacy. It's not just, okay, I have a, a, a license and I can just make it, but they actually show up and with the dealers and with the motorcycles and the actual representatives from the company and they actually help me and they're proud to be working with me, not like I am with them. I'm just, I'm flattered and it's, it's awesome. Yeah, we had Big Pete in our studio and he was just showing me the photos from the event uh that Mr. J's did, um, you yeah, know, I saw the motorcycles, obviously I saw you on the bikes, just some gr beautiful, beautiful bikes there. Mm. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely. Mark was there. Mark can attest to it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I was just into it, you know? Uh, we, we had a little logistic problem of getting the cigars. We didn't get enough, and it was unbelievable. We were, what, Robustos were done, done in about a half hour, Phil, maybe? That I mean, it was like, it was too fast. Yeah, it was. It was unbelievable. And the, what I like more importantly the crossover debonair to Indian. You know what I mean? It, yeah, it, it's, it's something just, with two different identities, mm -hmm. but they, they come together as one. They really, truly do. It's it's unique, it's different, and it's refreshing. So it really one is. of the things I noticed about the band was it, it has this, like, rustic feel, like the color, the white color, uh, off-white color on the back has these, like, brown accents. Was that something that was your idea or the person who created the bands for you? Because I really think it makes the cigar work and really kind of embodies the, the brand of Indian Motorcycle. I mean, really, nobody has an original idea anymore. Um, I have people that I can't take credit for everything. Um, I have a lot of great people around me that help me. <laughs> uh, Bite your tongue. <laughs> Joe Michelle's laughing. But it, the, the, the antiquing of it, you know, and the way that it looks like, because I wanted people to think that it's such an oily wrapper and it's so, you know, authentic that they kind of rubbed off on it and it's an antique look. And it came out, that was my vision with my artists and stuff. But with that red foil and the embossing of the Indian head, and then also the distressed or you know antique look of the the actual paper, it looks like parchment. It looks like an old document that you found in, in mm -hmm. of the debonair ideal, as in early America. But you know that the antique, the antiquity of it can be now related into the new age and stuff like that. You know, I think the box for a non-wooden box is a shop. You see how mm -hmm. that is? That is incredible. Yeah, that that box. I like. I love the box. Um, the art on that also. Yeah, it really, uh, you know, I was actually. I, lo I love you, Mark. I love you, Mark. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what I love about the red foil is I think of a motorbike with it. You know, it just makes me think of that motorbike with it. It's very subtle on that background, but yet it's effective in the whole message with this. Because that, that color is actually the Pantone Indian red. That's the one from 1901. That's what the trophy trademark of Indian is, that Indian red. When you think of a chief, you think of a red chief, full fender, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That, with the suicide shift on it, that's what you think of. And it took a, to find that foil close that didn't look tacky, that was a hard thing to do. That was difficult. And, and the best part of this is like any new launch of any cigar, anyone does, we're already into our third order, and that's since September. Yeah. Think about that. Three times, three reorders. It's amazing. It's you know, and I, I was small little store like ours. Yeah. I can imagine Texas and, and bigger states killing it. You know, we were, uh, it was a year ago when you were on the, sh the third anniversary show and you announced the comeback of, of getting the trademark. But now we're a year later and this thing, it's out on the market. You're mm -hmm. talking through three orders. Oh. And um, they're smoking fantastic, right. too. Now, Phil, I, I know that you, I'm so happy for you and, and that this new blend is coming out. All I get at the shop, if I haven't been asked, 50 times, maybe more, Connecticut-wise. Is that something you want to look into in the future? We, You know, just with our relationship and 
you're one of my key guys in the store at the store level, also in friendship, but also with Paul and uh, Will. We uh, we've all entertained it in private to do a Connecticut, but I think it's either I think it's it's been asked a lot, and I'm I've been trying to find the see the problem with with Connecticut Shade is finding it and finding a quality that can be reproduced that's even keel that's that high yellow or that real Connecticut Shade blonde, which is man it's it's ransom a to buy it b you got to commit to so much and i i don't know yet how it would reflect on the blends i have because you know i'm a core blend guy i don't want to have to mm -hmm. if i have to but i don't want to go back to the drawing boards and give something so drastically different that when people are buying a debonair they're not getting a debonair but they're getting a debonair with a connecticut on it if you can understand i I, I i know we come we had a conversation with it we just we mentioned some different blends but it is it's just like uh it, it's a, such a huge market but if anyone can figure that out the both of you will, and with the help of Leo, I'm sure that that will that will come to fruition sometime. When we don't know, but something tells me it will work. No you doubt. know it, buddy. I mean, yeah, it's only the natural natural progression of the industry. But you know, I've always tried to not confuse the public by getting Debonair out there, super exclusive, very high priced, very pedigreed in the way that I'm trying to do something on a level which um is the uber exclusive. So. I came out with that first. It done, It took a while, but it's doing well. And then when I brought out the Indian, I brought out basically the the regular brand of Debonair, but it's Indian, so it's the same factory. It's the same really Americana feel. So we have two brands: one is very expensive, and one that's well priced mm -hmm. with quality. So it's one Debonair house that holds them both, but it's not one brand. So I didn't lessen Debonair, but I can only bring up Indian later. So it's it's. It's a lot of planning. My little tiny head, man, it explodes half the time. <laughs> Jean-Michel, you're sitting there quietly smoking a cigar. Uh, what are you smoking? Well, I'm smoking Golden Age Corona. Mm -hmm. Very <laughs> nice. Very I nice. Oh. Yeah. I, like I said, I'm a big fan of that uh, Saga Blend number seven. Um, can you run through the components of that cigar for us? Because I find it to be a really good medium-bodied cigar. I don't find it to be too too strong. It's something that I would smoke in the morning. Um, and with the lack of a Debonair Connecticut, you know, that might be something that people also want to try. Um, but I think it's a great medium-bodied cigar. So I want you to talk a little bit about that blend. The, the blend number seven, it's a true medium cigar. It's really a true medium cigar, but it's you know, people say often, yeah, but it's flavorful. This one is definitely the case. It is not stronger than medium, but because it's it, it has so many tones, so many notes, so many flavors, it's very entertaining. But it's a true medium cigar. It's not a medium plus. It's not a medium mm. minus. It's a medium. The blend, it's, it's a very interesting blend because it's a four-country blend. The, the wrapper is an Havano seed because it's all Havano seeds. We kind of like Havano seed. Uh, it's it's, a, it's a, a Brazilian Havano as a wrapper. Uh, the, the binder and the filler are from Leo's Farms, and there are Avanos from the Dominican Republic. And then we have just a tad of secos from both Jalapa and Jamastran. So we have Honduras, Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, and, and Brazil. And that makes it all those, all those variations, all, this, uh, all the, this entertainment while you smoke uh, is due to this, to this very complex blend of those four countries. Back. Yeah, right. and then you take all those complex to, to, yeah, tobaccos from different countries, which makes it complex, and then you put it in a perfecto size, yeah. which just uh, uh, really perfecto. takes the case yes. for me. Yeah. Yeah. By far, the best by Tola. And it is definitely not a single cigar. This is a cigar who actually has to age quite a bit for, for a, a mild body cigar. It's a cigar, if, if it's not in an aging room for six months, you cannot hit the market because it's not there yet because of all those variations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, it's rare on the market that you can have an everyday perfecto to smoke every day. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's an everyday perfecto by far. Um, yeah, sometimes the, it's the price, price is it's, right. But it's also a very well-constructed cigar and Absolutely. consistent every time I have it. I like seeing you in the studio, Will. Oh, I like being here. Yeah, it's great to I have like Will so. in studio. It's weird. I'm, I'm thinking it's a hologram. I yeah. <laughs> I'm not in costume. That's why... Oh. We don't have the hologram technology yet, but check back in a we, couple we, months. We might, we might, you know, we might the rate, be there. Paul's going, yeah. You know how we are. We always like to stay ahead of that technology uh, yeah. factor. So, <laughs> yeah. hey, guys, what's going on in the factory behind you? Can you guys talk about that? It's Friday. It's Friday, <laughs> and they're, they're, getting, they're getting ready to go home. Here, I'll walk out. I'll show you. Wait, so they're, so they're making my cigars yeah. on Friday. Is that what you're saying? Making everybody's. Yeah. <laughs> 
Come we're going on live out. into the factory. Live into the yeah, factory. There you go. Oh, that's we got awesome. a, we're, in the, we're in the blending room where Mark was in. Everybody's been in that room we're sitting in. But this is the main floor. That's really cool. So what what cigars do they make in there, uh, Phil? What's that? Hold on. You can't, that's why we came in here. There's the, there's, the, there's the rapper guy. What's up? That's the rapper guy. <laughs> there you go. What's up, rapper guy? So, <laughs> hey, maybe that rapper guy should you use uh, Paul's outfit. That's right. There. I kind of look like a rapper guy. He's a rapper so, guy. Yeah. Different kind of rapper. <laughs> Different kind of rapper. This is actually the room where it magic happens. This is where we sit down to, to, to tweak blends. Yeah. That's where right there, that's where Mark sat. Yeah. And smoked. Yeah. <laughs> Over there. With the door yeah. open. With the door open. <laughs> that was a, I don't want to get into all that one. Yeah. You guys, yeah, you guys, are, you guys are breaking up. The Wi-Fi signal's getting kind of funky. Did we lose them? I don't know if we lost them, but yeah, it was, I think it was Phil moved the laptop around. Wi-Fi signal went a little wonky. Hopefully it settles back down if, uh, or not. Yeah, I wanted to ask him which cigars they were making there in the background. Making a cigar. Oop. Oh, did you ash on yourself, yeah. already? Uh, not yet. Not yet. On the floor, me, though. That's yeah. okay. That's why we have a vacuum. I'm enjoying the Maduro on this thing. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't had a Maduro since the event because I just I gravitate so much towards I, the natural. I, I perfectly did that. I put one Maduro right in there. And oh. I took the Maduro. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Yeah, it looks like we lost them, but in the the, the Maduro uh, in and Phil said this too. The Maduro is lighter in strength <laughs> than the natural. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it is. It's a it's a medi I mean, it's not as powerful as the the Cor Debonero line. Um, and and blend it that way. Yeah, I mean it's a different Maduro. I'll tell you what, without jumping fast forward before you know, we do, the, do our awards for the end of the year, but value-wise, there isn't much more than what this is for this kind of money. Um, uh, hands down, it's right up there. Yeah. And I tell you what, that Toro, speaking of value, the Toro is coming into its own mm -hmm. in the natural as well. I smoked mm -hmm. a couple. Of, and like even since the event, I found they got a little better. Which tells me that the aging potential in these cigars mm -hmm. is very is just is outstanding. And mm -hmm. to get a cigar with a lot of value like that, and then be able to age it and get even more value out of it as and, it ages. And, and is I'll tell you what, two really cigars cool. I smoked in the uh, uh, last week or so on the bigger ring gauge, which I was totally taken back by. Again, hopping on Phil's Gordo, but Jose Blanco's six by sixty Maduro. Hey, if you want to hop on Phil's Mal Gordo, man, that's <laughs> that, that's a personal. That's thing. That's a personal but thing. But Jose, his six sixty was out of this world. Out of this world. Who's that now? Jose's uh, Maduro. Jose Blanco. Oh, oh my God! Will was just saying that, dude. He was just yeah. We had a big frown on one of our computers. There was. Did you see that? Yeah. It was the It was a, a frown, a frowny face. I didn't like that. Yeah, it was a frowny face. We don't like to see frowny faces on our computers. We but, like our computers ah, to be happy, it's but it's just you know, like being at home. Any, any, you know, just like everyone else, they get temperamental. They get a little cranky sometimes, and we gotta whip them into shape. So. We'll do that there. Um, checking the schedule. No. Um, so we're, we're a little over time, which is which is okay. Um, but we've got a lot of a lot of great segments coming up. Yep. yep. And uh, are we are we streaming live right now? Yes, yes we are. Just to uh, just to keep everyone listening. Uh, <laughs> coming back, I'm sure they're going to listen no matter what. It's the fourth anniversary. What more important day is it than that? But uh, I'll be coming back to the studios again at 5.30 with Mr. Paul Joyle with a major announcement that you're only going to hear on oh, wow. Stogie Geeks. Get the wow. exclusive. We love it. Thank yep. you for wow. that. Yep. It's so very good. Tuned. Yep. Yeah. Stay tuned. But, so. you know, I want to talk more about, you know, this Maduro, it's, it's really a cigar that, you know, Phil talked about the first degree being an entry into mm -hmm. the Devon Airline. This Maduro could be an entry into the entire whole house line, so mm -hmm. to speak, because it's not an overpowering Maduro. No, it's not. Yeah, that's a cigar you can give to a lot of different kinds of smokers. New smokers, mm -hmm. yeah. seasoned smokers. It's very versatile, in my opinion. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I, I, like I said, I, and while I was looking at the band, I kind of started noticing the antique effect on it. Oh, that's, that's stress what, look. That's the first that, thing Yeah, that's really eye. cool. It, it, that's it, my it, favorite it, part no, of the band. I, I thought maybe I kind of was smoking sloppy or something. 
No, 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 no. That's just the the, the anal retentive way of Phil and and, and everybody yep. puts that. It's, this is not by mistake. This yep. is all planned. It's just the way it is. Yep. No one else does it like this. Yep. Incredible. Yeah, you know, it's a uh, you know, and for folks who also don't know, you know, uh, Saga Cigars and, and Debonair both are spot. They they do work yeah. out of mm-hmm. the the same factory. The same fa- yeah, yeah. I think they have different areas of the factory per se. Mm. But um, mm-hmm. that's why uh, you see both Phil and John Michelle together, and we got them back right now. Hey guys, welcome back. Oh, there they are. Yeah, we, we were just. It freaked it out. Yeah, when you picked it up. We were, you know, Phil. We were just kind of rambling on a bit, but <laughs> the the one thing I kind of talked about with the Maduro is, you know, first degree was an entry into the original Debon Airline. This is a. This is really an entry type Maduro in a lot of ways that anyone could pick this Maduro up and smoke it. It really has a wide appeal. It's it's sweet. It's it's got enough light taste to it, and it's got enough body that it'll keep people interested. I, that's what I think. Oh, there's no doubt. Yeah, I agree. Phil, so we're having a, a, a little t- a tough time here, and you can turn your volume up a little, maybe. Can you hear me now? There oh, you yeah, go. A little brother. better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you might want to adjust your volume if you can. We can adjust on our end as yeah. well. I want to. I want to ask John Michelle a question. Um, John Michelle, you have. Uh, I mean, I've seen Saga really start to take off in in the last year. We had you on the show back in May. I mean, how has it been going since the trade show? It's you guys had a pretty busy trade show as well as Phil there. So I kind of wanted to see an update. You're in a lot more retailers now. Well, I mean, we're we're doing the slow trail, which is uh, shop by shop visiting. Where uh, Phil and I will uh, will travel again in November, go around. But I was uh, last month in Atlanta. I'll probably will go back around there, and uh, I think it's it's well received. It's, uh, and 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 we're basically in Texas. I mean, we're we're basically omnipresent. Uh, but it's it's really a job. We 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 don't try to invent the market. We try to convince the market. I guess he's there to stay. Yeah, and you know, I know you were down at our friends down at Cutter's Cigar Emporium. You did an event down there. And you know, Atlanta's a very good market. It's a very competitive market. So there's a lot of brands that are trying to compete for shelf space in there. And I, I know the people at Cutter's, that cigar has been, they would have brought it in if they didn't think very highly of that brand. So, I mean, gr- it's a great job. What, what I found that- excuse me, what, what I found in Atlanta is that people are effectively, it's, they're, they're, they they maybe they are very involved in the cigars. They like to learn about the cigars. They like they like they, they are very critique of the cigars. Oh, yeah. If they don't like it, it's hard to tell you. They're a little bit like in the Northeast actually, on, on that point of view, with a different accent and a different way uh, uh, of explaining mm-hmm. things. But they are passionate about cigars, and and, and uh, it's 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 actually I, I really enjoy this area. Yeah, and you, that's a great point uh, because you know Charlotte's about four hours north of Atlanta, and. That's not a knock on the Atlanta market. It's a it's a tough market, and they are very discriminatory in terms of what they want to bring in there. And just four hours away, I see a big difference with that. So that's a really good point. So again, kudos to you and the brand and the Reyes family there. Oh, absolutely, define shelf space. That's that's the big that's the big thing. Yeah, we're going on. We leave in the like in next week. And I've never been to Atlanta before with any of my stuff. So John Michelle made some headway there. I think uh, I had I had a good vibe at the show. I had some people from the Georgia area come, and um, Joe Michelle went and said, "Dude, it's a place to go. It's like a real good market." So, hopefully, Debonair and India both can do well there. You know, what are the, what are the dates you guys are going to be down there? We go from the thirteenth, the thirteenth or the twenty first. Now, Phil, I want to ask you, um, the sizes in the Indian motorcycle seem to be a little more traditional than the sizes in the Debonair. You know, Debonair has the first degree, which is somewhat Perfecto-like. Uh, it's got that Sagita, which is a Lancero-like cigar. Um, the Indian motorcycle, very standard sizes, Robusto, Toro, Gordo. Did I miss it? Churchill. Yeah, Churchill. 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 Are there any plans to expand Indian motorcycle into some of those different sizes? Probably not this year. Probably in the next year. I've been getting... I'm be back like I did the first degree in the Sagita, you know? Mm. Um, I wanted to know what people were looking that they thought that would do well in a store. Really on the idea with um, Debonair was what cigar could get a Debonair in people's hands so they'd work their way up, you know, mm-hmm. into the higher brands and the higher pricing. But with Indian, I tried to come out real basic stuff that I know out there that I've, over the last two years, my third year now, that I saw that, that are constant 
handful bought cigars. Mm -hmm. And the Robusto, of course, Toro is like incredible. I went Gordo to 50, not 60 because of the bigger ring gauges, and people seem to dig of that. And then I did the Churchill just for the classic. If somebody really likes it, wants a lot of it, they can buy it and have a longer smoke. Mm. Yeah. Now, we, you guys are mentioning Atlanta, Northeast, which is a tough market. Phil, you just come off a long road trip, well, a lengthy road trip up in California. Can you elaborate on that? How did that go for you? It went well. I've never really concentrated on California. It's a whole different animal. I know that, mm -hmm. of course it is, you know, you know, just quoting, you know, the obvious. But um, it went well. The north in California, northern California is a really more friendly to um, newer brands. Um Southern, like, you know, L.A. area, mm -hmm. mid-California, which is, um, it's more on the, the, the known brands, but there is some people that are willing to take a shot. Then when you get into Southern California, it's real South Orange County, they're uh, like the North. They're open to new brands. They want to work deals. They want to mm -hmm. try to do some stuff. But it was um, kind of good that I had Indian with me because uh, in, in Sacramento, up there by Loomis, at Tobacco Republic, great shop, great ownership. The Indian people came. Um, then in uh, in Merced, the actual dealer came to the actual event from Fresno oh, and great. brought like five bodies. Um, there was a, a, an event that was done before I came by a guy called Cigars Limited that he did incredibly well. He did that also with uh, the Indian motorcycle people. Then I didn't do anything event-wise in L.A. I just visited, but then I visited some great shops in the south. I went all the way down to San Diego. To Captain Hunt's there oh, in yeah. the Marina Village, awesome guy. I visited the guys at um, at uh, Churchill's, great people. I visited the uh, Dana Point Cigar, great guy. Then I went to New Tobacco, which are another great ownerships. I'm just cutting my teeth in California, to be honest. I'm, uh, no, that, I'm that's getting a, a guy yeah. to help me out there a little bit because it's mm -hmm. so far, and I think there's potential. But you know, I'm sorry to say, and I'm partial to the Northeast, and mm -hmm. you know what I mean. In Texas. No. <laughs> I mean, I just, I'm just, I don't know how to say it nicely. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I answered your question, I don't know, but yeah. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> that's what I want to hear. The different segments, different regions. Absolutely. How, how, how they went to it. It's, it's, it, it's, that's the answer I wanted to hear. I'm glad that it worked out for you by all means. Phil, I want to just talk briefly. I uh, was going to run a little short on time here. Uh, I we uh, we screwed up earlier in the day, I think. And well, we we I don't know what we happened. just but we we've been having such a good time actually. That, yeah, that we, we just sitting yeah. here talking to people. But I want to ask you about your A size in the oh, debonair my goodness. Maduro. <laughs> um, how limited is that cigar, and what was the driving force behind coming out with the A size? I just thought that because um, the Maduro was such a received so well that I, I, I des, the, the Maduro line deserved a limited edition. And um, the first degrees, it stalled out of the starting gates, but then it took, I mean, I mean the, the, the um, Big Solomon stalled in the beginning, but then it took off like crazy once people started knowing about it. So I thought that uh, the Maduro deserved a, a real limited edition. Of course, it's, it's uh, 500 boxes, numbered plates, um, the same theory as all the debonair um, limited edition stuff. And the 33rd, I thought it would, I just like that term because it's the highest degree. And I think that you've worked your way through um, the Havano Maduro line. And I think it just was a testament to, I think I did a real good job on that. I worked hard at it. And um, it's just uh, it's just a special cigar all around. Oh, I, I think. It's size to burn so good and, and keep its flavor <laughs> consistent, grow gradually and not get gummed up at the end and, and nasty, it just, I mean, it just turned out well. I, I, all the debonair people that I, I deal with in my shop, I call, that's the reward you gave people for, for being debonair. That's, uh, that cigar is by far, well, my leading candidate this year is oh, a cigar high. of the year. Yeah, it, it's it's something, something very, very special. Seriously, that's, okay, yeah. call you me show, whatever. Part? What's that? You smoked one with, you smoked one at the show two mm. years ago yeah. that was like young. Right. He told me not to smoke the one you gave me. Yeah. He said, right. And I told you the same, and you saved it. Yeah. And um, I could once those it. get about a year on them, it. because of that wrapper and the length and the amount of tobacco, yeah. I'm smoking one now, and it's, this is like a second. I grabbed off the thing that was, you know, not exactly the way I wanted it. And look, I mean, it's like this is the third ash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and it just burns. I just nice. love tasting a cigar like that, and it's in its infancy sometimes, just to see. Where it's going to be, and it did not—it did not let me down. 
It did not. You knew it was going to be gonna there. sound corny, but you guys have been integral in a lot of my success. It's not even from the publicity side. It's from the actual honest to goodness, real input from Stogie Santa to Paul, my boy Coop. You guys have always said the truth to me, not mm-hmm. because I work with you. And I mean, I don't know if the, the listeners know that I didn't sponsor these guys until way after I started doing stuff with them. Mm-hmm. Um, because I wanted them to really believe in the brand and believe in what I was trying to do. And then I believe in them. And that's what the whole ideal is too with Debonair is that it's a, it's a two way street, you know, we're, we're both going in the same direction, but sometimes we go the opposite, you know, uh, no, but it's, it's a, a great point. I remember when uh, you came back yeah. from the show I and you brought back Devin Air yeah, he, he, and handed it to me, and I was like, "That's what he did, yeah." This cigar is great. And, and just to elaborate on Phil, it was a two-way street. When we were down there, I was talking. I could, I just, I could feel the passion and whatever. And I said, "I can't believe this." Went back to the room with Paul, and you know, some some people look at price point. I look at quality because quality can't yep. be bought. Yep, and that's my opinion. And it was such a, it was, it was the other, as much as you were searching out to see what we were all about, it's the other side of a consumer searching you out. And mm-hmm. it, it, the first, the first, first cigar, I couldn't believe it. I said, this, maybe he put it in his back pocket. Maybe this is something, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, it hasn't stopped since then. It is, yeah. it's a two way street. It's yeah. a great comment. My grandfather always said, you get out of something what you put into it. And, oh. and you can tell when people put in their heart and soul and work really hard on, on mm-hmm. something, and it shows in the final oh. product. Oh, so. absolutely. Yep. I absolutely. I agree. We both, myself and John Michelle, we know we're, we're confronting a very difficult time in the industry with all the legal coming around and also you can attest to it that we've seen more new brands come out in the last two years and i'm in my third year than i swear to god that i can even remember during the boom yeah yeah and and that's it uh, yeah and on a closing note i know you're running short on time yes uh, everything's been such a negative um scenario with fda and whatever I just I just ask people please be positive. You know, look 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 at the glass half half be half full. Mm-hmm. You know, you know it, it is what it is. Fight the fight, you know, just it, it, nothing you're going to do. Whatever happens yeah. happens. And we'll it's we'll find our way through it. We're going to have to continue fighting, which is why it's important to sign up for the Cigar Rights of America, cigarrights.org. I want to thank of course um, Phil Zangi and Jean-Michel Louis. Absolutely, Jean. Two you guys, you guys are guys. awesome. Two great great cigars. You guys support us. We support you. Come back. It's home. all good. Yeah, yeah. Anytime. We really appreciate it. Uh, mm-hmm. And Phil, you're going to see the one last question I got to ask. Are you going to see the new Rocky movie? Yo, you know it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I can't wait for Thanksgiving night. That's all I got to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys see Southpaw? No. No, I got to see oh. it. Hey. I'll- you don't even know I'm telling you, it's our era. You just go see it. You tell me. Oh. Really? I, I can't wait oh, to see you that. Gotta, yeah, it. now you got so me. It. it was really, really, really well done. He was very convincing as a fighter. Jake, yeah. that Gyllenhaal guy, did an amazing job. Mm-hmm. It's got the crying. It's got... <sighs> we didn't... Oh, what the... F- you know, the whole... It's got the whole thing. Mm-hmm. got to see it. We would definitely do that. Excellent. Phil, Joe, Michelle, thank you very much, thank guys. Yeah. Have a good day. Best to your families, gentlemen. Bye bye. God bless. With that, we can take a short break. We're going to come back. Looking at my schedule here, um, we're going to interview with Todd from the Havana Cigar Club. Yep. Um, so we're running a little behind, but we're going to get that set up and come back. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Still, lots more to come.